Well, hello there. Welcome back to the Agassino Zynga Show with me, your host, Agassino Zynga. And this is episode number 294. That's 294. I'm saying it with some sort of hesitation because I'm not too sure on the numbers, but it's somewhere in that ring, somewhere in that kind of ballpark figure. If it's your first time joining, thank you for coming back. If it's your first time coming back, thank you for joining. And if you just stumble upon this through just pure luck and chance, ha, <laughs> got ya. I'm not Will Smith, you know? I might look like it in the thumbnail. You might have thought I was Idris Elba or some shit, but unfortunately I'm not. But you're here anyway, so the clickbait worked. Um, if you want to follow me on the old socials, then do that. It's in a link below. You see the description. All my um, handles are on there. Give it a click. Give it a little look through. Seeing as, you know, the epidemic is, or the pandemic, or the virus, or World War Z is spreading. I'm on these platforms a lot more than I am usually. So definitely follow me on there for all the bants and the memes and the sharing of the videos and clips and all that sort of good stuff. And in general, you know, for all the kind of social ribbing that you know and love from the kid, the boy, the man um, known as myself. But yeah, um, this is your home for all things culture, streetwear, current events and all that good stuff. Um, try and do these at least twice a week. Some of them will get uploaded on YouTube, or most of them do. Some of them gets transcribed into it or converted into an audio format, which you might be listening to now via your podcast app or wherever you use. So definitely check that out. And if you are using a podcast app, you know what you could do to lend me a favor or to help me out. Leave me a five-star review, share with your friends. That would be nice. If you're watching on the YouTube, smash that like button, hit subscribe. You'll obviously leave me a comment. So um, as I'm sure you're aware, there's, you know, there's one topic on everyone's mind right now. Everyone keeps rabbing and talking about, and it's getting a bit boring. I'm gonna be honest. It's getting a bit boring. It's getting a bit. It's getting a bit boring. It's getting also a bit frightening to talk about it ad nauseum every single day. So I'm gonna kind of mix things up a little bit and hopefully um, sprinkle some humor and some fun to the situation. Not to make it a little bit. Not to make it so bleak as it is, which is kind of hard to avoid. Really, there will be some serious topics in there, but there will also be some additional frivolous stuff like you know trainer updates and releases and stuff just to kind of get your mind off things because i know no one's thinking about buying your next supreme hoodie i know you're not thinking about buying your next pair of yeezys but you know why not think about these other things whilst this stuff is going on so you can just kind of get your mind off stuff in general so um definitely watch out for that let me move this camera a little bit closer to make it go on so um updates on myself um i washed my hair today that was good um, as you can see, it's a little bit more fluffy than it normally is. I've got a really shiny forehead because I'm assuming all the grease I put in my hair somehow spread over my forehead. So don't watch that. If you're listening via the podcast, you have no idea what's going on. But if you're watching it, please um, excuse the kind of shyness of my forehead. You can probably see a reflection in it. But yeah, my hair's looking a bit mad. I'm looking like I'm on an episode of Survivor right now. Um, beard's going a bit ungangly. I'll probably have to trim this if I want to wear my face mask. So that's a bit of a sacrifice I'm making at the moment. Um, running is going pretty well. Run outside earlier today, had a little bit of a 5k around the block. Um, you know, the presence of police was a bit off-putting, you know, running past some uh, meat wagons or whatever the, uh, whatever the term is for police people sitting in vans and paroling the streets and making sure no one's loitering around. That's quite off-putting. But the good thing about it is that no one's out, so I can literally run, you know, um, without any kind of swaying left and right because usually whenever i run especially if i don't run in the morning if i'd run certain times after the or, you know in the evening times the roads are packed with commuters coming back home and you always having to like you know move left and right excuse me excuse me jump on the road and that kind of expends more energy than just running in a straight line so you end up working out 10 times harder than you probably would have because you want to get around people uh i don't know cross the junction before a car gets there just loads of weird stuff happens so it's quite good that you have the ability to kind of just run around without no distractions but the circumstances are bloody weird, isn't it? Because it sort of feels like everyone's gone somewhere. It sort of feels like everyone's gone to some sort of party that I wasn't invited to. But the reality is that everyone's indoors. So that's the freaky bit about it. Like, it, no one's on the street. It's like, you know when you watch those post-apocalyptic movies, like, I don't know, like I Am Legend or something, usually no one's there, right? It's just like one person, like, kind of roaming the streets, trying to find remnants of civilization or trying to see if there's anybody, like, you know, that might have survived the, the 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 meteor strike, whatever it may be, but it's usually just one or two people just hanging around. It's never it's never like people are just stuck indoors and don't want to come out. Um, maybe that's what is that the purge? The movie, the purge is like that, right? Where everyone's sort of like battling. Is it battling like battling to stay alive? Do they come outside? They do, right? They come outside in the purge. I'm sure they do. I'm not I'm not really watched it, but it's a bit of an eerie feeling. Like you know, everyone's indoors, probably watching you as you're running past their house, but they're not exactly coming out. Cause they can't so that's a bit of a strange one but apart from that i think everyone's sort of 
reacted pretty well to it it feels like in london i think for the most part everyone's gone everyone's kind of taken the warnings really well it took a it took boris coming out again the other day sort of like you know laying the law down and for any it feels it feels like shit got real when mcdonald's closed before that things were just a little bit you know wishy-washy but when mcdonald's pret manger costa and all these places closed down which are oddly enough they're sort of like the you know they're sort of like the without even trying they're sort of like the you know the what would you say the general meeting spot for most people especially in london that's the place where you generally go and meet your friends or it's usually a point of reference right or how far are you from the costa how far are you from the mcdonald's how far are you from the print especially if you live especially if you're gonna meet somebody in a well populated little part of london like liverpool street or something right there's about 1700 of them dotted around that one little area so it's definitely turned into one of those spots and i guess for people that freelance as well it's probably like a little it's probably a cheaper version of you know hanging out at we work or something or one of those spaces you can just you know pull up buy yourself a little filter coffee from Pret, and essentially you know use the wi-fi all day for basically a quid which is not bad considering how much these other co-working spaces use so for them to close down i think it really woke people up like oh shit this is really real and i think even libraries have closed now as well because i remember i think so i think libraries are done as well so non-essential travel is completely out of the out of you know out of uh any possibility you just can't do it you are limited to going out, i think once a day you can go for runs which i did i took advantage of that but you just have to go back you can't be outside you know just lingering with your mates which is good which probably is a reaction to all the stuff that happened on the weekend everyone just hanging out and going to fucking you know for columbia road flower market because they just couldn't wait one more day to get a fucking cactus or some shit right it's funny that isn't it? you would like it, it, it had to be the entitled sort of like yuppie yummy mummies and new balance wearing daddies from stoke newton that are the ones that kind of you know fucked it up for everyone right they kind of pushed the boat out they went and put on their four kit wanker cycling outfit on went to go cycle somewhere looking like they're going to the tour de france but they're not you know your dad with four kids mate stay at home put the bike down do you know what i mean your kids want to play i don't know catch with you in the living room or some shit but no here are these guys going out to richmond going to buy another fucking cactus to put on this on their beige wall to take a picture on instagram it's just ugh it's pathetic really isn't it really it's like you know the people with the most privilege the people with the most um kind of disposable income the people who are probably not gonna be affected by it as much as everyone else are the ones taking the piss right they're going to go buy coffee table books like like really is this a time now to go and you know wank over some architectural magazine somewhere on columbia road is that really the time now really right to be exchanging fucking cycling tips with your mate somewhere in richmond park is that really what you should be doing probably not but you know what can you do but you wish they would deal with them the same way they deal with the um, lawbreakers in India. I've seen this video kind of floating around on the interwebs I went to share here. Let me see if I can get it up on here. Play it first. <laughs> so if you're just hearing this, there's various Asian dudes or Indian dudes in India who have been caught outside right roaming the streets and i don't know if these are vigilantes or these are police officers because some of them have uniforms some of them don't but they've essentially got these bamboo sticks that are like i don't know i don't know let's say a meter long right so fairly long bamboo sticks tied together and they're just smacking the fuck out of these guys so I'm, I'm assuming these sticks you know don't get me wrong you're not gonna maybe after repeated strikes you might get an open wound but they're not gonna you know it's not gonna break a bone or anything but it's gonna hurt it's gonna hurt a lot especially if repeated strikes on like a fleshy part of your body it's no joke and they're just absolutely smacking them. <laughs> it's not even like a it's not even like you know the little clap you used to get from your mum if you just fuck something up like a little slap in the back of the head so you can just keep on moving it's not even that sort of stuff it's like a proper winding it back and bang on the side of the fire and it's like jesus but everyone seems to be having it i think it's I'm not sure if this like a cultural thing where you know the police are just allowed to just hit you <laughs> like you know like not allowed but it's like it's like a thing like i don't know it's like um corporal punishment is dished out by not only teachers and also law enforcement officers and but these guys don't look like the policemen they just look like regular folks i'm not sure if these are like you know people who are kind of taking a leadership role in the community and they're the ones who are kind of you know smacking people if they break the rules but this is mad bro like imagine your neighbor just getting a bamboo stick from his garden just hitting you because he saw you outside like, come on, Derek. Like, what are you doing? Do you know what I mean? I know your wife, man. What are you here before? Look, he's getting smacked in the back. And these Indian dudes look big. You know what I mean? They're not the smallest guys. These, I think they hire some of the biggest because, you know, 
you don't really see big Indian dudes really, right? You don't. I've never. I don't. I don't know. You don't really see strapping unless they're Bollywood actors. You don't really see like six foot plus, you know, two hundred and twenty pound Indian guys. But they seem to have hired them all in the special, all in the law enforcement. They seem to be ha- actors or policemen. So that's bad news for civilians. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. They're just smacking them. And it's worse too because most of them are on motorbikes. So, like, if you get smacked on the butt with a bamboo stick on a motorbike as you're driving by, that might make you lose control and, you know, crash into a tuk tuk van on the side. You know what I mean? It's, that's not a joke. And most of them, if not all of them, are not wearing helmets, no protective gear. So, if they fall down, you know, you're getting like an entire skin graft on the side of your arm. It's no joke. <laughs> Did he say retards? I don't know what he said there. He didn't do. This is insane, bro. Imagine they did that in the UK. Imagine if, like, you know, hordes of policemen were just around, just, you know, with, I don't know, what's the equivalent of, like, a PC, maybe, like, a PVC pipe, right? Something that you might find in, like, a building site somewhere. And you just put those together, tie them around with, like, elastic bands, just, like, hitting people. Imagine what that would be. The scenes, bro. Like the scenes would be nuts, but yeah, they, I don't know what I'll go on there in India, but people are getting battered left, right, and center. It's absolute madness. I don't think you could get away with that here. And then I think this is the last one. Something similar to where you know, people are just, what, what are they congregating somewhere? And I, I don't know where they are as well. Like, they seem to be, seems like a roundabout or some sort of traffic stop somewhere. It's like motorbikes roaming around in circles. And then these guys who look at Pistons are dressed in like, these amazing khaki outfits, right? Like they've even got, you know, imagine letting someone hit you with a babu stick who's got like really well, you know, put together outfit on, like in khaki, well pressed. He's got that kind of pleat line at the front, shiny boots. I'll be annoyed, isn't it? A well, well put together moustache. Bloody hell! He hits one and his friend leaves him on the bike. <laughs> Mama mia! <laughs> absolute scenes well i'm hoping it doesn't get to that here in london i'm hoping we are able to obey the laws and we don't have you know massive sort of like end of day wars between civilians and policemen but you never know man you never bloody know you honestly don't but yeah let's get into some topics here and talk about some stuff that i thought would be of interest um number one would be a big surprise for some people who have watched um, previous episodes and seen the clip but it's, it appears like you know Waka Flocka was wrong he told us a few weeks ago that you know black people couldn't get the coronavirus and we all believed him all right because you know he's obviously you know a scholar he's obviously a, a, one, of, one of the major leading voices in science and especially in deadly diseases so we took his word for gospel but it's now been brought to my attention that Slim Thug one half of Fisher House has unfortunately contracted the coronavirus so it puts the puts to bed this suggestion that black people can't get it in it it's mad in it imagine like i'm not one for using the argument of like oh use your platform responsibly all this sort of shit because i don't think that's a thing i don't really believe in the idea that you know celebrities or people are being our role models i think that's putting too much pressure on people who don't want that responsibility for the most part unless they ask for it, unless they explicitly say i want to be a leader i want to be an inspiration most people are just you know it's not their fault they happen to be rich and famous. It's just a job, right? They're just doing their job and keeping it moving. So to ascribe this idea that they have to somehow be these fault leaders or have have act responsible on their platform is bullshit because most of us don't act responsible in our relationships, in our jobs, just at home, right? On a night out. So to expect that from other people is a bit, you know, hypocritical. But there is a part of me that's also like, you know, sometimes there needs to be this idea that, you know, you should, I don't know. I, I would subscribe to the idea that you shouldn't talk about stuff you just don't know about. You just shouldn't because it's, you've got nothing interesting to say, right? You'd want to, at all times, you'd want to be, especially if you're a celebrity, especially if you're somebody doing the job that people don't necessarily take too, I don't know, not too seriously, but people don't come to hip hop artists for like, you know, societal worldview points, right? Or, you know, I don't know. That's not what you come for them for, right? So if that's the case, I would want to showcase my strengths. What, what i'm talking about if i have an air of interest that i know a lot of stuff about i don't know if you're a rapper and you happen to be well versed in the property market you happen to have a what good knowledge about stocks 
You have to have a good knowledge about fashion, about cars, sports. I would just focus on that. That would be the only thing I would speak about outside of my music. I wouldn't go and start talking about, you know, the elections and politics and climate change. That's got nuts not in your remit of expertise. It doesn't show you in the best light. I would just stick to the stuff that I know. But some people just can't help themselves, right? They just think because I have a because I guess because they have a bit of knowledge about everything. Not knowledge, but because they have some sort of insight about most things they kind of just want to speak about it. because peace is happening in the world they just want to put their word out there so when we go fuck a sister and says oh black people can't get it i don't necessarily think he thinks that he just feels like he has to say something and maybe the smart thing he did as well is say something that was so nutty so crazy that it probably spread a lot faster than if he would have sat there and just said you know what i don't have a really good understanding of what's going on it's not my area of expertise and other people who are more knowledgeable I got their eye on it and they're doing a good job. I'm just going to take the precautions I need for my, me and my family. If he said that, no one would have cared. It wouldn't have made TMZ. It wouldn't have been on the shade room. It would have just gone under the radar. So if he comes out and just turns it into some weird conspiracy, right, then suddenly everyone pays notice. But, you know, Slim Fog now has proven to us that it's not true. And in classic fashion, in classic celebrity fashion, he decided to sit down and make a video, right, detailing to us exactly what's going on. So why not? Why don't we hear what's going on with Slim Fog? So check this out. No games being played, all right? The other day, I got tested for the coronavirus yesterday, and it came back positive. As careful as I've been self-quarantining and staying home, I might have did, went got something to eat or something. I did some stuff like that, simple stuff like that, nothing crazy. Stayed in my truck, had masks, gloves, everything on, and my test came back positive, so... Y'all got to take this stuff serious. Sit home, self-quarantine. Do not come outside for however long they saying. If you have uh, symptoms, you need to go get what, ch- what checked out or whatever. I'm good. I feel good. I don't got no problems right now. Um, the other day I had a slight fever and a cough. I don't. I feel better now. I don't have no fever. You know what I'm saying? Or nothing like that. So I, I feel like I'm good. But y'all better take it serious. It's real out here. Coronavirus. So that's interesting though, right? So he definitely does say that there quite clearly that he he felt he was quite careful beforehand because I think some people who have caught it have not really said what's happened or they've kind of been a bit coy on it because, you know, most likely they were a bit reckless. They went out a few times when they shouldn't have gone out. They were air kissing politicians and shit. But he's been quite clear and said, no, I was quite careful. I was wearing a mask. I wore a glove. I was staying indoors and I still got it. So this suggestion that somehow we shouldn't, this suggestion that somehow um, we should just let old people die, right? Because somehow they've been expand- they're expandable and stuff is nutty because it means that you're somehow discounting this idea or discounting the evidence, which tells us that the people who are actually spreading it are people who are young, like me and you, right? People under the age of 70, we're the ones that are actually spreading it because we're the ones who are more able to move. We're more mobile. We are probably, uh, we make up a bigger, pop- bigger part of the population, especially globally. Um, maybe especially outside of the countries that have like you know uh, people who are of an older age group where we make up most of the population of the world so for younger people to be so flipping about it is madly self is madly selfish and self-centered and self-serving but it also doesn't necessarily reflect what is actually going on and again it might be just because people just don't get it because i think i have this belief that because it's a flu thing because it's something that you can't necessarily see I think people just don't take it seriously. I think if it was a virus that resulted in people having massive boils on their face and pus coming out and their fingernails or their li- or their joints going all curled up like they got arthritis and stuff and, you know, losing a mad amount of weight, I think people will take it more seriously because there'll be something visceral, something physical you could kind of put in the front of a paper of a tip and you can kind of make people get crazy but I think when people see people on ventilators and stuff it doesn't necessarily have the same punch It now it's silly to say that but I honestly think that's the truth I think if it was honestly something that resulted in a rash or some sort of puking right people will take it more seriously but for now they just think you know and again because of the information coming out there that because he said Simfuck said himself you know if you have got it and you're young and you self quarantine for 14 days usually you can get over it without having to go to the hospital so if that's the case, some people are just probably taking that information and saying, you know what, it doesn't matter if I get it, I'll be all right in two weeks anyway, and I still get a two-week break. So there's a bit of self-serving 
um, kind of like uh, if I get it, it's a vacation anyway, which is not true because some people are it's like like all things, right? Some people get colds and they, some people get colds and they have to stay home for two weeks. Some people get colds and they can still go to work. It's going to affect you differently. So to roll the dice and just hope it doesn't affect you that badly is mad, isn't it? It's not really the best way to kind of spend your time, um, and there's no guaranteeing that you're going to get better if you do get worse. Like, there's no guarantee about it. Like, you could be one of the people that might have and not deficient but a gene that doesn't allow you to recover well from these kind of things and then what it's just a nutty thing isn't it it's i don't know that but i guess in times like these you do get to see people's true intentions and true colors and this idea that all people are expendable is just like wow i mean people are people are basically saying that you know let them die because they're gonna die anyway it's like what in the fuck are you talking about oh it's insane but what can you do? Um, let's move on to some topics. I've got a few things on the list here that I thought would be of interest we can talk about. Um, number one, so um, just continuing the theme of what's going on. I've seen this weird thing online with people um, shaming people who are, you know, going to going going to and from jobs that they necessarily can't get out of or they can't necessarily work from home with. I think there's been a big drive with some places, especially office places, you know, your general job where you probably fill in numbers on a spreadsheet or you share stuff on social media or you write emails or blog posts you don't need to be anywhere physically right um there is this argument that remote working should be probably more widespread especially in corporate settings than it is already uh, i think startups are quite good at it you have some places you know they allow you to kind of have a couple of days home a couple of days in the office and stuff you know that's all well and good and they have the infrastructure that to work with it you know zoom and all these other platforms that you can use, Microsoft Teams and stuff, you can kind of, you know, get on uh, get on with people and have a little chat and make sure you have attended meetings, Google Hangouts. Some people are set up better than that than others. But I think there is a wide, there is a majority, I would imagine, of the workforce, especially in the UK, who live check to check and also go to jobs that you can't necessarily do from home. They have to physically be there, right? And if the place, if the sector they're working in doesn't fall under the jurisdiction of having to close or doesn't have them required to close and they have to turn up for work and they have no guarantee and they have no um thing on their contract that allows them to stay at home and still get paid they only get paid the days they work to somehow shame them because they're cramming into a crowded train to go to work is incredibly incredibly smug right and it just goes to show just how i don't know what people's thinking is sometimes with this thing especially in the uk you have a lot of people who kind of spout this shit that they look they want to look after the working class and they want to fight the fight for single mothers and immigrants and stuff but when stuff like this happens you see their true colors you see that they're more probably aligned they have more in common with the tories than they do with any kind of uh you know lib dem labor party kind of idea of uh sharing the wealth or making sure everybody has a kind of quote-unquote even playing field that they don't really echo those thoughts, especially when you see how people are posting the things online. I just don't, I don't know, just rub me up the wrong way. Um, so here's an article here from the Daily Mail. Uh, this website is absolute, you know, flipping visual aids, but let's continue. Um, this headline says, Fury as at Sadiq Khan over crammed London transport that risks fueling coronavirus spread. As Health Secretary Matt Hannock says, there's no good reason tube services have been slashed, which is not true because a lot of people still need a tube. They still need to get to and from work. They can't afford not to go to work. So to cut the tube off would be, you know, would hurt those people a lot. How else are they going to go to and from work? How else are they going to be able to support their family? It makes no sense, in it? But, you know, what do I know? So here's a, the text here. It says, Sadiq Khan faces mounting fury over cramped London transport that is risking lives tonight. As Cabinet Minister swiped, swiped that there is no good reason tube services have been slashed. Um, Health Secretary Matt Hannock delivered a stinging rebuke to London Mayor, saying the London system should be running in full, so essential workers... Okay, I, I, I agree with this guy. Essential workers uh, do not have to be close to the other, which I definitely understand. Okay, so this, I guess, Sadiq Khan in his infinite wisdom, which, you know, he's a bit of a donor anyway, isn't he, really? But he decided to slash the services to kind of make sure people don't go on the trains, but then it's also affecting essential workers. So then in the mornings where they want to go, there's not, you know there's not uh five trains an hour there's maybe now two or three which is now uh stressing and putting strain on the services when they're going it just makes no sense and it? it's just backward thinking 
Um, the jab came after another day of chaotic scenes in the capital where health hazard carriages were rammed despite the unprecedented shutdown of the British society. 500 British transport police officers will be on the rail network this evening to remind passengers that only those making essential journeys to work should be using the trains. Mr. Khan has blamed the commuters for flouting a ban on non-essential travel. This is not CNN. And urged people to avoid rush hour to save lives. Claiming he does not have enough staff to return services to normal. Mr. Hannock went on attack as he asked at Downing Street press conference this evening why NHS staff and other key workers were being forced to put themselves at risk in the crowd of trans- Which is definitely true, right? They're the people that need to be looked after the most. Um, people that are working in our health services and they're having to you know, fight for seats and for spots on the train, putting people at risk who are on there, carrying the virus and spreading it to people that are trying to help. And it's just, yeah, you, you just, again, which this definitely lends to the idea that as much as conspiracy theories should be believed in theory, the idea that you should question everything is true. There's also this, there's also a realization that people are quite dumb in it. Like regardless of what job they have to coordinate a conspiracy theory, you know, with many different people, and have them all kind of sing from the same hymn sheet it's going to be a lot it's going to be more difficult than you imagine especially when you see the kind of level of ineptitude and just pure ignorance and stupidity in the decisions that come from people who are kind of you know these are experienced people who have worked in politics in different varying in various levels and as soon as one little tragedy happens they all have no idea what they're doing it sort of it, it sort of makes you think you know they're just you know they just don't get me wrong they're just average folks like you and i but they don't seem to have the ability to conduct themselves with any kind of level of, you know, stillness and stoicness and calmness and ease and clarity and really hectic situations. So how much more for concocting this crazy, you know, thing than pulling the puppet string behind the scenes? I don't think that's true, but what do I know? Um, so it continues here. Um, Mrs. Matt Hanok, says... When it comes to the tube, the first and best answer is that Transport London should have the tube running in four so that people travelling on the tube are spaced out and can be further apart, which is definitely true, of being a two-metre rule whenever possible. And there is no good reason in the information um, that I've seen in the current levels of tubes provision should be as low as they are. We should have more tube trains running. I definitely agree with that one. Um, earlier commuters packed in like sardines hit back at the mayor who runs the capital's public network with one victim claiming it was about saving money tweeting using the pandemic to save a few pennies exactly uh, nice work helping the people who claim to represent another london row utter disgrace we need professional leadership at this time which which again i think i've said before i think a lot of politicians or people in politics are i can understand the worry they have right because if you come out and you're too hard about stuff and you get it wrong, you're not going to get reelected. If you come out and you're too soft about stuff and you get it wrong, you're not going to be reelected. So some of them are just doing this sort of like non-action thing or the most obvious thing that is available to them um, just so they can look like they're doing something. But I still think in the long run, it's going to hurt their chances more than help their chances to get reelected. Most of them probably don't really care, I'm assuming, because, you know, I guess they got, you know, they got what they wanted out of the situation. A lot of politicians go into these jobs like becoming mayor they get the better clout they need it looks good in the cv and then from there they can go around you know doing speaking gigs at charities and all that sort of stuff and earn a lot of money that way so maybe they don't need to think about their legacy but i don't know man if that was me i would be a little bit concerned about how people viewed me right after i left the job i wouldn't want to come into it and leave it a complete mess for the next guy or woman in it Anyway, it continues here. Uh, what else did I have to say here? Loads of pictures of people packed in the trains in the morning. Um, yeah, no no two-meter space rule there being observed. Singer-songwriter. Who's this person? Nicole Smith tweeted, This is my tube this morning. I live in Zone 4 and work in Zone 1's hospital. I love my... Oh, sorry. NHS sonographer. Sorry, Nicole Smith. Not singer-songwriter. <laughs> my bad. Um, she said, I, This is my tube this morning. I live in Zone 4 and work in Zone 1 hospital and i love my job but now i'm risking my health just to be on this journey and jesus christ look at him and that's a, what that's west ham jubilee line station i'm assuming right is that west ham looks like it bloody hell mate it's absolutely insane but yeah um, a lot of ineptitude going around in it with that one so again so i'm just not a fan of the shaming on social i just don't like people saying oh look at people like no one's listening to the suggestions they're all going out and it's like look do you think these people want to be out there you think they want to be fixing train tracks and carrying slabs of concrete up and down stairs and shit? No. 
they're doing it because they have to feed their family, keep a roof over their heads. And if they don't turn up and pick up the concrete, they don't get paid. So, you know, put down your phone, stop tweeting, and let the people do their work in it whilst you work on your laptop with Wi Fi that you have living in your swanky apartment somewhere. It's just like, ugh, some people, man. Anyway, let's continue here. And then, of course, the most devastating news of all of them McDonald's is closed as well, isn't it? McDonald's has shut its doors, slammed them shut. Um, and that necess- that definitely caused a big sting. I think in the restaurant scene, I saw a lot of people who I follow on Twitter who are kind of industry professionals, who have their own little independent places who are. I think he, the guy made an actual good point about it. I think he said something along the lines of, um, I think I might have it here actually on my list of stuff. That he, a guy, a restaurant owner, made a really good point about the fact that he thinks um, Boris kind of fucked it up the way he kind of announced it. I think they basically told people to avoid going to restaurants before they actually initiated any kind of lockdown. So what happened was that people were scared of go- So I think he said people were scared of going and he saw a decrease in the number of people going to his restaurant in March that affected the way he made money and also, you know, it's going to affect how he paid his staff. And then later on, the government then goes and says, oh, you shouldn't be congregating in any restaurant. All restaurants needs to close. Um, there could have been a bit of, you know, clarity in the beginning of like, okay, don't go to restaurants at this date. No one's got, so everyone kind of suffers at the same time. But I guess some people who are maybe a little bit more risque, some customers or patrons who didn't mind would go to other places, not the other one. So maybe if you were worried, you might go to a McDonald's and order it from Uber Eats and then not go to your local, you know, Turkish restaurant. But then that hurts them because they having to like, you know, keep their lights, keep their doors open, uh, have the staff working when no one's buying anything and that's wasting money. Whereas McDonald's can get away with, you know, um, probably surviving on just Uber Eats deliveries alone. But again, it's still a big unprecedented move from them to just completely shut it. I'm assuming... Part of it probably had to do with the fact that most of the McDonald's staff are on zero hour contracts. So even if they did offer a Uber Eats delivery service, how many people would they have working in each restaurant? Who would want to come in? Not a lot, probably, in it. Um, it still requires. I don't. I assume even if you just, even if you just had a restaurant open only for Uber Eats, I would assume it still would require a big workforce. You still would need, you know, maybe ten or more employees to get guarantee that it runs smoothly. Because obviously, you know, um, what they call Uber Eats drivers are, what do they call them? Freelance, not freelancers, but they're like, um, I forgot the word, there's a word for it. But they're not, you know, they're not contracted to McDonald's. So they don't, you know, that's not something that's coming out of their pocket um, in that regard. But yeah, this is an article from uh, Eater that explains a little bit. Um, it says, yeah, coronavirus is closing down a huge chains what happens to the workers nando's uh mcdonald's costa and pret and all closing in response to the novel corona um over the weekend 21st to 22nd uh, one mcdonald's staff member who wished to remain anonymous said um served what would be their last customer for some time um some were actively hostile making a point to grab people's hands when passing food out of the drive through or coughing on them what the fuck is wrong with people um that was before the global food chain announced it would shut all 1270 of its uk restaurants okay it always feels like there's a lot more of them than there, than there is in it 1200 obviously that's still a lot because we're a tiny nation but jesus as of monday 23rd of march from 7 p.m and i guess there were queues in it for the last meal i'm assuming right so this past weekend nando shut down its 400 plus restaurants pret and closed closes 400 hundred cafes and costa shut down is two a thousand plus cafes too these restaurants will do will not do takeout or delivery they are closed if temporarily following the government um enforced closure of restaurants and cafes on friday evening novel coronavirus impact and restaurant near industry is only beginning to show its hand but interesting because i think they said also in the statement that you could do delivery so i, I, I assume they just didn't want the hassle right so i don't know um and also map again saving money for them as well because everyone's also a contract with not paying people hourly wages uh, article continues here and says those numbers might seem big new order of magnitude to reckon with as the crisis closes uh, london independent restaurant uh, and small chains consider these numbers uh, 135,000 18,000 8,000 19,000 that's how many mcdonald's lands of pretty much cafe staff went out of work over the weekend bloody hell each company has said they will put payment measures in place mcdonald's will offer up full pay until 5th of april which is fine which i think is fair i don't think they have to do it especially with these subsidies that the governments are you know promising them um 
that's pretty good, you know, especially with the confusion. Look, we're going to pay you up until the fifth because, you know, Boris is an idiot. But then after that, we're going to have to wait until they give us a package to the kind of support those wages. That's just fine. Nando's will pay for two weeks. Pret Manje will pay until the end of April, which, which is fucking lovely. Costa for eight weeks, which is really, really good. This will give way to Chancellor Rishi Sunak's latest financial package, which guarantees 80% of payroll will be made available to employees for staff taxed as pay as you earn. Um, as of the 25th, 20th of April, sorry, February, sorry. This is where workers are concerned. McDonald's pay sp- statement accounts for directly employed staff. Those working at company-owned restaurants. Oh, okay. They're also taking into account an average pay for the last 12 weeks, meaning staff who have been off sick on holiday or take advantage of the flexible zero-hours contract may lose out. Or the ones who are working in a restaurant that's owned by like a, somebody that kind of, what do they call them? Oh, I forgot the, my brain's going foggy, but yeah. So you have to be the fortunate one is actually employed by McDonald's owned one. Bloody hell. I wonder how many of those 1,000 are actually McDonald's owned and not owned by an independent person who just kind of set one up. A franchise, right? Yeah. Um, only, 8, only 8% of McDonald's restaurants are company owned. 18%. Jesus. The rest are franchise, which the crew member who witnessed the customers coughing on staff told Eater remains uh, means franchisees have full autonomy with regards to pay. They say 60% of the crew at the restaurants are guaranteed hours, contracts of 8, 16, or 30, and the other 40% on zero-hour contracts, which are not yet clearly covered in Sunak's plan. Measures for the zero-hours contract and self-employed expected to be announced on 24th of March, so tomorrow we should have more information regarding that. Uh, this, or today, basically, this represents a threshold, a freehold problem. McDonald's have yet to communicate this pay policy to franchisees who have yet to communicate to their staff. Workers on already precarious, flexible contracts are not secure. 80% of the eight-hour per week contract on average retail sales as wages, £7.18 per hour, which is 190 a month, with rents and bills covering currently not being reduced or frozen by the government, Health Secretary Han- Matt Hancock recently admitted himself that he could not live on the statutory sick pay of £94 per week. The mathematics of the measures uh, based on the average of the earnings rather than being fixed by the independent baseline make precarity reproduce pre- what? make precarity reproduce precarity. The crew member said that those staff, at least at their store, are often students or younger people living at home. Those on 30 hours are the ones with second job. So, but again, it's, it's a longer article to read, but I don't under, I don't really see the way of fixing these sort of things because part of the reason why you'd get a job at McDonald's or at Pret is to kind of take advantage of the flexible working hours, right? Especially if you're like wanting to work in the entertainment industry or something, right? Or you want to be an actor or whatever. It probably is advantageous to work somewhere where you can essentially work from 4 a.m. until 2 p.m. And then you can still go to your, your auditions later on in the evening, right? You can kind of mix, you know, change your hours, swap with somebody in a rotor. But if you have a 9 to 5, you can't necessarily do that. So is it a bit naive to expect the same kind of... Um, the same kind of uh, financial support or kind of job security that a nine to five person has than you do? No, isn't it really? You have to give something up. It has to be some sort of compromise. You work a flexible job that allows you to like, you know, do mornings and not do evenings and you might have to give up some benefits that you would get if you worked in a corporation somewhere and you were locked into sitting at your desk between a certain amount of time because then that would allow you to go to your classes or do your thing you know there's some things you have to get so i'm not sure how they fix that is it a way of like improving the pay overall do you raise the hourly wage for everyone still i don't think that helps in general um do you decrease the hours that's not going to happen um i don't know what the best way to do it but i just don't think that giving people who are taking advantage of flexible hours the same job security as somebody who works in nine to five that doesn't make any sense in it because that job security will also mean that you also have to give up other things too it will require you to come in more do other things you know stay longer out i don't know it's just there is a little bit of a give and take in these situations but i just don't know what the right solution is but it's good to see at least pret you know doing the god's work and covering people for a long period of time but i don't know what you do if you're mcdonald's especially if again if your business is kind of propped up or the reason why it's successful is because of the franchisees right because people who kind of go and open their own in the set in a you know location they kind of maybe choose or take over um that's what what's made them a global power so i don't know i don't know but anyway that's one topic there let's move on, move on here what else do we have to talk about do, 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 do. Uh-oh. 
guy here. What else is on the list on there? We got oh, so um, talking about all the stuff, um, some developments on the UFC, UFC front of things. Go. That's the bad thing about going out and having a jog during this stuff is going, especially when the spring season arrives, you know, pollen count is high, your allergies rock up, and then suddenly people are thinking you have, the, you know, dreaded COVID-19 when, unfortunately, it's just my sinus issues, but hey, what can you do? Um, so, Dana White, head of the UFC, is um, hell-bent on making sure UFC 249 goes, or is, you know, happens. Um, the, obviously the headline event is Khabib Nam- Namagamedov versus Tony Ferguson which has been cancelled I think it's been called off five times now right they've set up a date put it together and somehow you know through injury uh, with whatever some things always happen and sort of like stall the fight so I think he's so desperate to make it work that he's now lashing out at people who are um, duly concerned and sort of like suggesting that it shouldn't be happening because there's other things bigger than the UFC at the moment but um, it's an interesting position to be in because obviously he has full, auto- full autonomy aut- autonomy autonomy on the UFC um, you know this partly owned by WME but he's essentially just the figurehead he's the one driving the boat he's the one kind of steering him in the direction he need to go so he calls a shot so if he wants to um, have these fighters fight you know in the middle of doha somewhere right under a dome surrounded by camels he can do that um and the reason why he can do that is because he's been such a he's been such a i don't know I, i've never really been a fan personally i think anyone that kind of is the figurehead of a company like that and is so eager to get in front of the camera and be the star and you know stand next to fighters and you know, just act hard and all that sort of shit. And then on top of that, he doesn't pay them well. Um, He kind of, you know, it has obvious vendettas against some people he doesn't root for. He has personal grudges against people. Doesn't He's not the most professional. Uh, he's obviously improved over the last few years, I think, because he just had to with ESPN coming in. But he's never really struck me as the most um, clear-minded, um, rational person. He's quite emotional. And you don't really want that from your leadership, especially when you're a leader of a company where you employ, you know, savages, right? Absolute, you know, people who can legitimately kill you with their bare hands. You want somebody who's a bit clear-headed, who can think logically and have the long game in mind. You don't want someone kind of flying off the seat of their pants because, you know, you're dealing with volatile people. It's not going to make a good mixture. But he just doesn't care, right? Because of kills, you know, he's in a position where he doesn't necessarily, he's not really going to get fired or anything. So, he can kind of get away with it. And if anything, I would say the UFC is probably one of maybe, yeah, I, w- I would say just, you know, out of just pure ignorance of the situation, it's a pretty easy job to match make in the UFC, especially with the level of talent they have on their roster, right? Because he does, people make a big point about, oh, Bellator isn't that, Bellator isn't this. Um, if you're not fighting in the UFC, you're not really fighting anyone. But it's not really their fault, right? Most it's as it's similar to like what's going on with the XFL and the NFL. The NFL is superior to the XFL because they have all the best talent to pick from. All the best talent want to go to the NFL, not the XFL. Until that changes, it's still going to be you know a place for the yesteryear journeymen sort of people to go and make a bit of extra money. Obviously, for the XFL, it doesn't. It's just a good thing because maybe you know your position, but. To suggest that somehow Bellator is is bad because, you know, the leadership doesn't know what they're doing or whatever it may be, or because Dana is some sort of genius, he's not really. He's just fortunate that the UFC was the one that were able to kind of capitalize on the mixed, med, uh, mixed martial arts uh, wave and they sort of cleverly aligned themselves against it. So, you know, when you think of mixed martial arts, you think of UFC, you don't think of any other league, just it's the premier kind of place. So because of that, all the talent goes there. So to matchmaker the UFC is not that difficult, right? To create superstars also isn't that difficult because, you know, you've only have to, you only, you only have to follow fighters' Instagrams to see how interesting and varied and complex their personalities are, right? If you're clever enough and you have the right team around you, you can make them people superstars. You can make them the next global icons easily, right? They've got so many different interests and hobbies that they're into and family dynamics that you can kind of, you know, um, exploit on camera and, you know, obviously with their permission, it'll work really well. So I don't necessarily, I think he gets a little bit too much credit really um, for the job that he's actually done. I don't think anyone could do it. And I think, especially at this stage with the investment that they got now, 
and how they're trying to legitimize the sport, quote unquote. They definitely need somebody else to kind of steer the ship. Um, I don't think he's probably the person to take it to the next level, in my opinion, anyway. And I think this story definitely echoes those thoughts, right? So this is from um, MMA Junkie. The headline reads, Dana White rips critics of UFC's approach to coronavirus and he calls them the wimpiest people on earth, right? This is the head of the UFC calling fans who are criticizing his decision to, f like, he's essentially doing everything. He's moving, you know, mountains to try and make this fight happen. Um, he already subject he already subjected fighters to go into Brazil in front of an empty stadium to go and fight. And if you know anything about UFC, you know MMA, you know that going to Brazil, part of the allure of it is, you know, the hostile crowd, the fucking energy, the the homers, right? Like just that that's what makes those fights memorable. So to go there and to after doing all that training, cutting all that weight and to fight in front of an empty stadium is such a empty climax. And again it doesn't serve anyone justice. Obviously for the fighters they want to do it because again Dana White doesn't pay them well, so they want to make sure that they are able to get something back from what they've done and expended from their training camp and stuff, but it's not necessarily a good situation to be in, and of course, this ticket is only going to benefit the, the two main fighters. It's, it, it might, Of course, it might trickle down to everyone else, but the people that everyone wants to see is the headline, you know, the headline act. No one really cares about everyone else's fighting on the card, so it's a little bit... I don't know. It's a bit self-serving, and again, this is unprecedented times. I understand he's reluctant to like cancel it, but it's a one-off thing that's happened, right? That no one could ever envision. It's not like you know, Tony Ferguson tripped on a wire somewhere, right? Or could be got stuck in some, on you know, got stuck in an airport where he can't leave. This is a big deal. But anyway, here's here's the statement. Here's the kind of story that kind of uh, expounds a little bit on it. So, um, what's UFC President Dana White up to these days? Dealing with the bullshit, he says. These were his words Thursday during an Instagram live interview with UFC World Vote champion Kamara Usman. What bullshit? White, of course, was referencing the ongoing coronavirus pandemic and its impact around the world. As of Thursday night, the global death toll was 9,700, with more than 235,000 confirmed cases. In the US, the death toll was 157, up to 40 last week, um, across 22 states as confirmed cases increased to more than 11,200. Right? Let's have those numbers in mind as we continue reading this. Perhaps the most um, sobering news Thursday came from California Governor Gavin Newsom, who projected that for roughly 56% of our population, 25.5 million people, will be infected with the virus over the next eight-week period. Professional sports around the world, including the NBA and NHL, among others, have um, either cancelled their seasons or prepared to uh, be off for months in collective effort to help stop the spread. So every other league, right? People that... Leagues that he's trying to aspire two right the leagues that he's trying to aspire the ufc to be like in the future have all cancelled so white however remains convinced the ufc which suspended its next three fights through to april 11th will be able to resume its operations in time for ufc 249 and highly anticipated khabib Nurmagomedov and tony ferguson fight scheduled for april 18th but without a location he said, here's this quote, here's the reality, we'll be up and running before any other sport will, which is nuts to say, right, just as a statement, it's as if, this isn't a competition, right, it's not as if like, um, we are trying to see who's the hardest, who can sustain the longest, who can bounce back, who's a warrior, who's a fucking beast, it's not that, it's not something, it's not like a, a fitness challenge or a kind of question of your will, <laughs> It's insane. But anyway, so the, um, our sport's different. We have our own arena next door, the UFC Apex. So we will fulfill every fight for every fighter this year and we will get this thing done. Last week, while um, other pro sports leagues halt operations and Bellator postponed its 241 event in Connecticut, the UFC went through with its show in an empty arena in Brazil, which is horrendous. White, White was come under fire for dismissing the threat of corona ever since he said nearly two weeks ago that he doesn't give a shit about it, right? Which is insane to say, but hey, not that he cares about it, what others think. He says, think about this. Go online and look at some people. And this isn't a schnook. This is just a fact. The weakest, wimpiest people on earth cover the biggest, baddest sport on earth, which is nuts to say, right? Because the same wink, the same people he's ripping on are the ones that are making it a global force. They're spreading the message. If you just left it up to the UFC to kind of market it, because you you've seen in late yesteryears, unless it's somebody that is undeniable, somebody has that, you know, that you can't necessarily fuck up, like a Connor or a Jorge Masvidal or... I don't know, a GSP. There's people who are just, you can't fuck up their story. 
the marketing team in the UFC isn't that great anyway. So they base they do need these weak, wimpy people that he suggests to um, legitimize the sport in some way, intellectualize it, and also market it properly because they can't do it themselves. So he's sort of like dismissing and criticizing the fans who are the reason why it's where it's at now. It's not because of his kind of clever, ingenious work, right? No one gives a shit about looking for a fight. Right, people give a shit about the interviews that Harry Owani does, or the podcast they appear on, or the stuff they do on Instagram Live, or the games they play. Like, no, it's not stuff that he does at all. Um, he says uh, the the white said, um, "What do you expect them to say? What do you think they're gonna say?" He says, "I have over three hundred and fifty employees who work for me. Right, multi billion dollar companies are laying off all their employees right now. We haven't laid off one person at the UFC, and every fight, every fighter that fights for me will fight three times this year." Our schedule will go on. Everybody who got, was going to get paid and we'll figure this one out. We'll be the first sport back. And oh, fuck, that shit. Everything will go on. It's like, Jesus, okay. Like, again, like the greed in it sometimes with these people. Like, how, like, how much money did Dana White get from the sale of uh, UFC to WME or whatever, whoever bought them? He got a mad amount of money in it. But it's still not enough. He's still trying to put everyone else's... And again, this wouldn't be a problem if fighters got paid. If fighters got paid what they were owed, if fighters got paid what they deserved for the risk that they're putting, right? They're risking their lives, you know, every time they go out there to fight for sometimes titles that don't mean anything, interim titles, whatever they may be. They're fighting against people who might be on or off PADs who are quote unquote pulsing, right? They're risking their lives fighting in this organization where if the guy doesn't like you he might give you he might purposely kind of sabotage your career and have you fighting an absolute beast after your second win ever in your career it's not i mean this wouldn't be a problem if you paid him if you paid him it'd be fine but because you don't pay them he's probably got pressure from the managers and from the owners or well, pressure from the the manager of these fighters from the fighters themselves probably dming him right because you know these guys are supporting their families of, of you know fighting in a cage so why did not say whether the UFC will or has the ability to test specifically for coronavirus when the events restart regardless he is confident um, in the promotions medical practices he says listen uh, the media can talk as much shit as they want he said right they don't they, they don't feed families they don't take care of fucking people they don't have people that count on them they don't have people to support and again it's just I get what he's saying, right? It's just the way he says it, isn't it? He just sounds like such a cunt. That's the thing. He just doesn't have no to say because what everything he's saying is true. I have a business to run. I have people to look after who have families, right? Um, I'm not gonna, um, you know, cancel everything just because I'm going to keep my eye out and see and gonna go by what the government says. And if they tell me I can't do it, then I'll close it. But until then, I'm gonna always look for another option. That's fine, especially if you're representing the fighters and the majority of them are saying, look. We don't mind fighting as long as it's safe. That's all right. But this idea that you just dismiss people's opinions because they happen to be weak and wimpy is like, what? And again, what's weak and wimpy mean? Are they weak and wimpy because they're not, you know, professional UFC fighters? Okay, that's cool. But who else is going to be that? Is they just, they're the 1% of the 1%. It's insane. Anyway, um, the, the, the continues here. They don't feed families. They don't know. They don't have people counting on them. They don't have people to support. They're doing the right thing as far as medical testing goes and everything. That's all we're doing. That's all we're fucking doing, actually. Says that's nothing new. We were doing that shit way before the coronavirus. We were taking care of people, making sure that everybody's healthy. And every fighter that's with me on the road is getting much better medical attention than they are at home. If they were with me, if they're with me, you know what I mean? No, I don't, mate. He says here, um, I told our whole roster. Um, if you or your loved ones have any type of situation or anything, call me. I'll do everything in my power to make sure you're taken care of. He's like, okay. Like, again, it's, he's put himself in the position where he's the Lord and Savior. You have to call me. Why isn't there a system in place where they can just get it done without having to call the boss and text him and say, hey, my wife is ill or I need to buy toilet paper. Why have to have to, you have to go through him so you can hand it out to them. But again, like, this situation is is exposing the greed of some people. It's showing that some people are just in it for the money, which is fair enough, but they also put other people's lives at risk. And if the fires are willing to do that, then fair enough is an equal exchange, but I just don't see the need for it. Um, it's eventually going to get cancelled anyway. So, Because the thing with this as well is like, Khabib and Tony Ferguson are training. They're cutting weight at the moment, right? They have it in their heads that they're going to fight. So they are depleting their bodies, spending time away from their families, right? Um, getting themselves in a position where they can fight. And then it's definitely going to get cancelled. So they're putting them through this whole 
mental exercise where they'll end up getting let down for what? Do you know what I mean? It's just, yeah, what could you do? Move on here. Uh, 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 uh. What else we talk about here to move on? Can we talk about... Hmm. Oh, yeah, this was jokes. Did you see this video of um, Gal Gadot and some other celebrities singing fucking John Legend's Imagine? It's just like, oh. I think as as the businesses have proved, well, businesses, yeah, businesses have proved or the owners or the founders have proved during this whole issue and, you know, politicians have proved how fucking uh, this, have proved how scrupulous they are. And how lacking in morals they are in some regards. I think celebrities have also proved how kind of uninteresting they are when they're not doing their job of, you know, their job of choice or they're not performing on the platform that they are experts or geniuses at. Outside of that, when they're just trying to interact with humanity and just be normal people, they are so corny that generally they do the most idiotic things. And again, in their head, they think this is fun. Um, they think like going around and sending, you know, these little voice clips of themselves or these little selfie videos of themselves singing John Legend Imagine and clipping it together to somehow unite the world is like as if we're this is what we're gonna be we're waiting for this, right? As humanity. We were sitting there just hoping to see Gagado and, you know, Natalie Portman and Zoe Kravitz singing and we'd be like, Yeah, now everything's gonna be okay. It's like, come on man, wind it in. No one gives a shit what we have to say. Um and it's just nonsense, especially because they're all performers, they're all entertainers, so they're all kind of doing that fucking weird singy thing. I'll play it here if you get to see, but it's just ugh, so cringe. No heaven. It's easy if you try. Oh, really? No hell below us. And there's people here who are rate as well on it. That's what makes it hard for me to watch. There's actors on here who are rate as people who are just subjecting themselves to this bullshit. But again, it must be hard, isn't it? If, if your agent calls you and says, Gal Gadot wants you to do this video and you say no, you don't want to not be invited to the next Golden Globes party, right? You want to make sure you go to these shindigs and smooch because that's how you get, you know, forward in your career. But also, this is like going to live forever, right? Once this is over, you're going to look like such a prat, right? Like when they sort of, like this doesn't contribute to anything, right? Who gives a shit about you singing? Above us on this like this guy, like what's Imagine what's all <sighs> the people. I think someone tweeted the other day, like actors and actresses or in general, or, you know, entertain people, they they are so, un, they're so uninteresting and when they're not saying other people's words, right? And which is kind of a bad indictment, right? That you're only of interest or you only have some sort of, appeal about you and other people are putting words in front of you to read it's just ugh. but in their heads again they think they're kind of moving the needle because they pretend to be somebody on a tv screen it's like all right for today. Yeah. who's this guy singing in the bathroom like tilting his head back like he's michael jackson like who the fuck is this <laughs> cringe it isn't hard now nah, allow it man i'm not i'm not looking at jimmy fallon trying to sing that's not on but um that was one and then there's just been a whole slew of them in it there's been uh i think i saw a video was it sam smith doing his best impression of it which is just like oh he's just like come on dude man you should there's better things you should be doing i don't know play the piano look after your cats i don't know something other than this but you know here he goes Let's get this up on here. And let's and let's actually let's actually go read read the caption because the caption is even more cringe than the actual video itself. I think it's just fair to say that, especially with the guys, right? Mental health issues or um <sighs> body dysmorphia sort of stuff is a way of being it's not a way of being quirky but it does kind of give people who have like no no personality or nothing else to offer the world a way to kind of be relatable because he's been on the whole entire run in it of like i'm embracing my body all this sort of nonsense constantly talking to us about his emotions like you know okay cool man we get it you're going through some stuff but it's just a constant barrage and now look at the look at the look at the caption for this video of him sitting in his room somewhere trying to act like you know like a shy, timid guy that hasn't sold millions of records and performed on the biggest stages in the world, right? Um, 
just woke up having a coffee and felt like singing i haven't felt like singing for a few weeks now it feels good have a beautiful day today everyone the sun is out for you xxx like what what are you talking about brother what the world needs now is love sweet love does it is that what the world needs right now love sweet love really I think we need medicine, mate. We need uh, ventilators. We need masks and shit. Instead of wasting your time sitting on your floor somewhere singing into a camera, why don't you donate some of your millions that you've garnered from singing shitty pop songs and get people masking in a little hospital? Again, I'm not telling you how to spend your money, but surely that is more worthwhile. Does he think they're playing this through the hospital speakers when people are on their ICU and, you know, getting shock treatment and having last minute surgeries to keep them alive? Does he think they're playing this through the system to get people in good spirits? Like, fuck in hell. It's just, I don't know. It's the only thing that there's just too little of what the world. <sighs> and I hope, I hope that people remember this once this is over. I hope people remember the corny, self, uh, you know, self enti- entitled, self absorbed, um, disingenuous people who somehow thought it was a good idea to do this sort of stuff i hope people remember them and they vote with their feet and it's like you know what you you can sing pretty well you make some good songs right but you were an absolute wanker during this whole period i'm not going to support it anymore because this is just insane like why can't you just not do anything just sit at home right you know throw up the odd tweet here and there of support why can't you just chill why do you have to do this like why it makes no sense but it's just a constant barrage of these fucking videos from celebrities again they just i don't know if they just they just have nothing when they have nothing to do so which would probably explains why some of them kind of um you know get trapped in the drugs and alcohol thing because they just get bored i'd imagine if you're someone especially if you're successful i think when you're not successful it might be a little bit easier maybe i don't know to kind of just focus on your thing that you want to do i don't know but maybe if you've attained a level so imagine you won like a grammy right an oscar or some shit you've got a, a really high rated album it's reviewed well on pitchfork you've got good reviews on rolling stone there might become a bit where there might become a point where you're just a bit you know you've reached your ceiling right in terms of your level of talent you've got good enough money in the bank you've got an attractive wife somewhere and you're just bored isn't it nothing you literally have nothing to do you don't have motivation to make a new record because you're living this fast flashy life that doesn't necessarily bring the most artistic work to the forefront really right you usually make your best work when you're dead broke so maybe if you've got a bit of money now you're not inspired so it makes sense why they get you know they get strung out on drugs and they go a bit crazy because they have nothing to do because if you're seeing what's happening now it's only been two weeks right it's been maybe a couple of weeks or sometimes in the maximum four weeks some of these people have been indoors some of them have families right they're not even spending time with their kids they're just on camera looking talking to us via social media giving us live streams of their families and doing these weird games like just sit down with your kids man they haven't seen you in a year and a half you know what i mean like i don't know enjoy some family time it's a bizarre way to go about things but again maybe again maybe it's not even there maybe it's their agents and managers telling them to keep pumping out content so directors don't forget about them but i'm pretty sure this isn't the time to be promoting yourself like that in that regard maybe i don't know who knows man who knows but I for one am loving it because the level of cringe that it's apply you know it's supplying me with is you know um is really legendary for my entertainment. But yeah, um to end it we've got Madonna. She did a video too. Everyone's doing videos, everyone's kinda out there swinging around and she looks mad, isn't it? She's had probably a bit of work done herself, but she's just I don't know, man. She's just singing and she's just singing with a brush. being quirky and fun and relatable in in a, in a in a bathroom that looks probably the same size as my living room you know obviously super relatable <laughs> it's like what are you doing I just want to die. That's it. I just want to die when I see that. I want to die. I want to. What's that? Who's the guy from uh, Game of Thrones? The kid when his mum finally kills his wife and he just jumps out the window. It's just like bloody hell, man. Some of the stuff is just nauseating to see. Especially if you're a fan as well. If you're a fan of them as well, it must be like, oh, come on. Sit down, Madonna. Jesus Christ. 
go braid your boyfriend's hair or something do you know what I mean it's like you don't anyway what do I know um let's end it there it's an hour in um thanks so much for tuning in to the excellent English show episode number 294 as per usual if you're watching this via YouTube smash that like hit subscribe leave me a comment if you're listening via the podcast app of course leave me a five star review share with your friends I'll be back again Thursday for an episode of the show yeah first let's do Thursday let's mix it up a little bit change it um, I'll make it a little bit more light hard I'll include some street rare news in there to kind of get things a little bit more you know take things away from this sort of stuff that's going on hopefully nothing crazy happens in the next couple of days but um, if you want more information regarding myself of course check my website down below too excellentzinger.com you'll be able to find all my socials all on there to follow me um, but until then see you very very soon take care of your nearest and dearest and you know just enjoy the time off that you have in it rebuild um connect um well not time off but just enjoy the time you have at home to you know sit down with your loved ones talk to your family and friends i don't know read a book um you know stitch that hole in the trousers that you have meant to be stitching for ages reorganize your bookshelf organize your itunes delete all your pictures on your mobile phone it's tough to do man come on let's not go too crazy and start making crazy videos online and stuff like i am <laughs> but anyway um apart from that take care be safe see you again very very soon bye peace